and from about 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning is a great time to trade it. And uh, I think it's uh, I think uh, you ought to learn about it. I'm glad I did. So anyway, let me get started. Uh, Morgan, thanks for having me today, and uh, I will try to go a little quicker than the 44 minutes and give it a break after me. Uh, I'm going to be uh, to the point uh, with what I'm going to show you, and uh, we've got a couple of announcements to make, and then we'll get going. I want to thank Adam uh, Mallory for putting the presentation together, and uh, let's get started. Uh, I started this uh, school in 1996, 1996, and uh, we've been doing it a long time. We located in Mobile, Alabama, and uh, when I started the school, we had a lot of success teaching one trade, and one trade that we taught back then uh, was in the first hour, and we called it the reference bar three trade. Well, that trade uh, expanded into... Uh, the global markets and a lot of different comprehensive approaches at the market. And, uh, and so what I'm going to talk about today is about how uh, a lot of people have a lot of issues with trading, you know, emotionally where they get too high, they get too low, where they don't handle the risk right and all that. And I think I've come up with a strategy that really works for people that need that confidence. So let me get started. Uh, as Dan said, and as I believe, you got to handle the risk part of the trade. Anybody can handle the winners. The bad trades are the ones that uh, tear you up, and you got to have a good, a good plan to handle when things don't go good. All right, my goals today: I want to place a value on knowledge and show you a little bit about how knowledge is valued in the marketplace. I'll show you the power of having a plan and how it can work, and then. My, uh, my last uh, object of being here today is get you motivated to achieve your goals because the one thing about it is is that uh, you can achieve those if you have a good plan and you have the right knowledge. How is the sound? Is the sound okay or is I need to, uh, is that on her end or whatever? Sounds low. Is that better? Okay, good. All right, there's our uh, facility located in Mobile. It's a 10,000 foot uh, place that I built to teach people about trading. Uh, we moved into it in 2001. And uh, we got a big class next week uh, in Mobile called the Old School Class. We've been around a long time. Uh, I've, I've been on the, I guess, the education circuit for a lot of years, and I've learned learned a lot. Learned how to teach people how to do this. I know that I know that a lot of people will say, "Hey, it's easy." Well, I'll tell you, it's not easy. You got to work at it. Uh, you've got to. You know, you got to have that desire, and then you got to turn that desire into action. A little bit about my background. I started trading in the early 80s. Uh, I've been a member of the exchange, still am a member of the exchange, uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Um, I had a Globex terminal uh, when there were only 50 of them in, in the world, and that was quite a learning experience. I've been trading the S&P since day one. And I've been educating people since 1996. So I've, I've been doing this a long time. I've seen a lot of good things, and I've seen a lot of bad things in the market. And, you know, the key is is uh, that I'm still around and I'm still kicking. A couple of my books, uh, Winning the Day Trading Game was the first book I wrote. It's, uh, it's sort of my story, how I got started, and some of the lessons I learned along the way. Uh, the strategies in that book, I still use today, so they're good, consistent strategies. The second book, The Markets Never Sleep, is about the 24-hour market and how the 24-hour market will help you get consistent in the market. You know, you got to learn how Asia plays into Europe, Europe plays into early U.S., and early U.S. plays into the afternoon. The last book is uh, sort of a putting it all together. Uh, it takes the attitude to win, and we talk about strategies there for the different times of year 
and how to take advantage of insights after a 30-year career. Now, here are some books outside of the ones I read. I like Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. I like the uh, website, naphill.org. Get a thought every day, get your day started off, get your thinking, and get you ready to trade. The second book is How to Trade in Stocks. Uh, it's about Jesse Livermore. I think inside that book, chapter 12, is the best chapter I've ever read as a trader on how to trade in stocks. It's chapter 12 inside that, that book. You ought to get it, you ought to read it, and learn what this man said. He's a pretty famous trader from the 1900s. Uh, he was a tape reader, and I think it would, uh, it would help you if you trade stocks. The last thing I use, and I've used it religiously for probably the last 25 years, is the Stock Traders Almanac. Uh, I like the way it, uh, it is sort of like a, a workbook uh, that deals with seasonals and deals with trends and deals with stats, and it sort of keeps uh, that record of what's happened, and you can learn from that. There are certain days that are important throughout the year. Uh, I'll just give you an example. The day after Thanksgiving, uh, it's the most bullish day in the last 50 years. We have a great webinar on that day, and we always try to trade before before uh, 8 o'clock comes around because it's really a good, a good trading environment on that half day of trading, the Stock Traders Almanac. You can actually download that from, I think, the iTunes store if you want it. I think it's three bucks. I got it on my iPhone. All right, here's something new that we brought uh, brought this month at DTI. It's our own mobile app. Uh, I would tell you if you have an iPhone or if you have an Android, you can search DTI Trader. There's two features about this app I really like. Number one, I can stay up with the market when I'm not in front of a computer. That's button number three, which is the center button. I can also push out insights and things about the market to people that have that have this download. Uh, I know I love it. I think the customer loves it. It's totally free. But search DTI Trader and and get it. I think it I think you, it'll help you to see how we go through the week. There's some examples of Tesla. Is anybody here long Tesla? I'm long Tesla, uh, and uh, it's a stock that uh, actually Morgan put me onto, and I started looking at it. And I got long about 160. It closed Friday at 190, uh, plus some cents. I think the stock's going to 200. I said that uh, about a month and a half ago. We got a lot of people that's long Tesla that's associated with me, and we're having a good time with the Tesla stock. Uh, I trade the Nasdaq futures, and uh, sometimes through the app we put out trades, uh, and it's it is really good. Uh, Todd, uh, you must have an Android. I think in the beta version, we're trying to keep the messages small enough. On the iPhone, you don't have that issue. But uh, again, uh, people love the uh, love the app. All right, what makes us different at DTI? There's a lot of educators out there. Well, the first thing I would tell you is we put our money where our mouth is. We trade live in front of you. And I think that's important to trade live in front of somebody that's trying to learn. Number one, it gives you confidence, uh, and it, it will help you, you know, learn about the different markets. We'll talk about the seasonals in a little bit, and we'll talk about things. The 24-hour global market. How many people use the global market to make your plays in your time zone? Okay, we have, uh, we have the ability to take what happens in Asia, convert it to Europe, be ready for what we call the early bird session from 5 to 7 in the morning. We take that, that market in Europe, we translate that to early U.S., and we're always ahead of where we're currently trading. And it will, it's amazing to see some of this stuff if you learn how to read uh, the different markets around the globe. I encourage you to learn about the 24-hour market, learn about the different uh, ways to look at it. Uh, we're in a global market, and uh, you just you know it's just something you better spend some time learning about. And this is the way we 
digest it from 3:30. Uh, you know, throughout the evening, you got the U.S. afternoon, which starts at 4:15. Uh, you know, the times are 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 laid out there. Asia first, Europe, U.S. morning, and then U.S. afternoon. Now, a very lucrative time is the last half of that European market before the U.S. opens. A very lucrative time to trade. That's when I spend a lot of my time trading. Chart reading. How many of you just focus on charts all day trying to find your, your next trade? How many people do that? I know that when I... I started, everybody tried to direct me to chart reading, and I found out that uh, if you really want to make money, you've got to be a tape reader because the tape will, will tell you what the charts are going to do. But over the years, a constant uh, issue has been students, you, go, you look at their computer, you see they got their charts up. And so I, so I got to thinking about that, and I said, you know, what we can do is simplify chart reading. You know, instead of learning all these different patterns, you know, the, the saucers, the head and shoulders, all that. I said, let's put numbers and evaluate charts. Let me show you how it works. I call it the trade matrix. What is it? Well, it's a way to take a chart and label it either as bullish, bearish, or stay out. Now, let's do this, okay? Three patterns. What I did is I put a plus one on the pattern on the left. I call that bullish. The pattern on the right, I put minus one. I call that bearish. And then, of course, zero means stay out. So there's three concepts that every trader's got to do. He has to, he has to learn when to be long, when to be short, and when to stay out. All right, let's practice here. How would I label this chart? Would I give it a plus one, minus one, or zero? Okay, that's how it works. Now, this is just a, a short 30-minute chart, but if you put this in context with a daily chart, now you start getting the trade matrix working for you. And I can show you how it works, but it's pretty, pretty simple. How would you label that one? Negative one. I wouldn't be going long, and I might be short that particular market. All right, and there's your your neutral one. Everybody see the neutral. Now the value of this. Let's say that you had who trades indexes in here. Who trades indexes? Okay. So what you would do? Write these markets down. You'd write the E-mini down. The NASDAQ, the Dow, the DAX, the Russell, and the London Exchange. Okay? And what you would do is you'd go to the daily chart of each of those and then look at the 30 minute chart. And if you get and you come back and, and you take that number and it's and it's really positive, then you got a market you want to be long. That's sort of how it works. That's the big picture view. So you go through the process, you look at a daily and intraday chart. Here's a look at the S&P. Now this is, let me show you this. Everybody see this? This is Friday afternoon at 2.48. Does everybody see that? Now I believe, if I look at the daily chart here, it's negative. So the setup I'm looking for come Sunday night is for the S&P to go short-term negative, and then I've got a match, and then I've got a trade. That's how it will work, okay? Does everybody see what I'm predicting come Sunday night? I'm predicting Sunday night to look for a short once the intraday chart goes negative one. Everybody see that? JJ, you see the, you see the daily chart on the left is negative. See that? Do you see that? Okay, the chart on the right is bullish. See that? So it's out of sync with the bigger trend. 
what I would look for Sunday night is for a negative one on the short term. Okay, that's what I would do, and I do that Sunday night, and I I will do it Sunday night. By the way, you'll hear more about that in a little bit. Everybody, see what I'm thinking going into Monday. Okay, now here's something else that I would include. I go back 21 years and I look at the Stock Traders Almanac. And it tells me that Monday, the last day of September over the last 21 years, has only been up 38 days out of 100. So it's a pretty weak day Monday. Everybody see that? You see that? So now I'm getting the seasonals on top, another data point for looking at Sunday night. In fact, I went home short Friday afternoon because of this, because I've got a probing position on that I will add to Sunday night. Does everybody see this? Because you, know, you always hear an after fact. Today, you're hearing it right before it happens. I'm telling you about it coming into this Sunday night. There's the almanac readings for Monday, 21 years. Let's look at the 24-hour market. When we look at the 24-hour market, we look at the reference bars. RB1 is tied to Asia. RB2 is Europe. RB3 is early U.S. And RB4 is the afternoon. So come Sunday night, what I'll be looking for is a negative bar on RB1. If I get that, then... see it and times are central you put it all together you put the 24-hour market together with the chart reading together with the numbers together with the indexes and that's how you get on the right side of the market so then you got to decide which one you want to try okay Today's subject is how you can trade the first hour of the market according to a plan and achieve success. So let me tell you my strategy and show you how I'm going to do it. I call it the irrational exuberance trade. Since I started teaching this trade, I have changed people's lives for the better. People now have confidence. People have a plan, and they're trading this first hour throughout the week. Okay? Write this down. Learn the IR trade. No, Roger, it doesn't. It applies to this Monday for the last 21 years. Okay, our goal. How many of you trade options? How many of you trade options? Okay, well, let's take a lot of people sell options, and I used to tell people I've never met an option I wouldn't sell, but trading options can be very lucrative if you know what you're doing on the long side. And I've developed a plan to have defined risk strategies on the long side of options, long side being buying a call, buying a put. If I buy a call, how do I make money? The underlying goes which direction? Exactly. And if I buy a put, the underlying goes down. All right, the trade takes place during the first 30 minutes. As soon as 8.30 happens, the clock, the race begins. Here's the tools I use. I use my roadmap software. Let me just, uh, hopefully he's got a picture of it. The roadmap software tracks all the markets because I don't believe in Staying in front of a computer all day. Here's some key features. There's a, there is the custom page, very similar to a lot, but I want you to notice that the opening is in the first column. See the opening in the first column? That's a key part of my thinking when I trade. The opening's in the first column. So if I looked here and I looked at the E mini, ESM3, I would say that it's negative. 
even though it might be up, I would say it's negative because at 8.30 in the morning, it's down. Everybody see that? And that might lead me to picking a put. There's the ETR page, which tracks stocks. You'll look here, and you'll see I've got Apple, Google, Netflix, Amazon, Tesla. And then I got the NASDAQ index. Then I got the E-mini and the Dow. These are the five stocks that I trade during the first hour. All right, let me uh, explain that to Roger. He's having a lot of trouble with that 38%. Roger, every trade day has a probability of being up or down. Okay? What the Stock Traders Almanac does, it goes back 21 years and takes the data. And it looks at that particular day. And then it puts it on a probability chart and basically says, this day has this number probability of being up. When you look at this coming Monday, which I knew, was very weak historically. And then I saw the daily negative. I went short on Friday afternoon. Okay? Now, that's a probing position. And this is how you enter different trades. I will go in. And I will, will add to that position when I get a negative bar on Sunday night. That's simple. Did I explain that good enough for everybody to get it? It's a simple concept, but it works great. It's not 21 days. It's 21 years. Okay, ETR. Why I have an ETR page set on 30 minutes? Because the 30-minute chart is the smallest chart I look at. When I look at a 30-minute chart, I can find out whether or not the intraday trend is up or, or that. Okay? And we think, you know, we think it's important. Okay, uh, Howard asks, how can one access the Almanac? You can go to the iTunes store. And download it. Doreen just gave you Amazon. You can buy it off Amazon. But if you want it on your smartphone, which is what I've got it on mine, and I have it both in the physical form, you can get it that way too. The importance of the mini pivot. Did you know that there's three key times in the first part of the morning? 8.30, 9 and 9.30. And the 30-minute chart will help me relate those times together to get the trend for the morning. You don't have to complicate it. You just got to know where to look. And the compass. This is a unique chart, part of our roadmap, that tells me where to buy and where to sell the different stocks I'm looking at. Remember, what are the five stocks I'm looking at? Just name it. What are the five stocks? I only got five stocks. I got Apple. I got Netflix. I got Google. Amazon and Tesla. So I got five stocks. I plug those into the roadmap. I plug those into the horse race. And I look on the compass where to buy or sell. And that's what the horse race looks like. This is a tool that I created to trade. Now, if, I, if you were looking at the horse race for the first time, let's say this is Monday morning. Let's say this is Monday morning. What stock might I consider to go long looking at the horse race at 8.30 in the morning? Yeah, you got it, Carol. All right, now let's take a different view. What stock might I consider to go short at 8.30 Monday morning? Yeah, you got it. This is the value of the horse race because it analyzes all those stocks and tells you where the fastest horse is. And that's the one you want to ride because we don't want to sit there in front of a computer all day. All right? You, you figure out what the underlying's doing, and then you buy a simple call or simple put. Here's five steps. You've got to understand the code, and I'll teach you that. You've got to pick your horses. You got to go to the compass, follow the plan, and let the horses run. Let's look at the plan. Let's look at all of this. Here's the code. Okay, I'm gonna ask some questions. 
if I know that this is the way I code each stock. If I know the monthly opens 4.93 for Apple, and a weekly opens 4.96, and we're trading at 4.87, what way would I be looking on Apple come Monday? Let me give you the setup. The open for the month was 4.93. The open was 4.96. It's trading at 4.87. So exactly short. This is the way it works. That's exactly the way it would work. And the strategy would be to buy what? Puts. Exactly. Straightforward, right in your face. Here's some terminology that you got to learn. If you don't trade off, you got to learn what at the money is. And the money got expiration dates are important. Which option and what price? Just sort of a, a simple overview of options. The strategy simple, it's straightforward, it's defined risk. Find a stock that moves around 8:30. I got five of them. They're all going to move, and you got to figure out which one's going to move the fastest in the direction you play it. I'm simplifying the problem as you look at the big picture. That's what the horse race does for you when you when you line it up. It's a beautiful thing to watch in real time. Apple went down. Tesla went up. That's where the reference bars, the compass plays in. Everybody see, look at the difference in those charts. I knew it by the code, didn't I? Look at the code of Tesla. What way would I be looking on Tesla? Up, right? And I'd be looking down on Apple. So I'm already looking the right direction on the setup. Netflix, up. Google, down. Amazon, up. All right, now let's talk about the actual trade itself. I teach people to use two options. We call it two units. The reason I do that, I want to limit the total risk to 1000 bucks. I'm looking for a $5 option. A $5 option is $500 invested per. So if you got two options on a 1000 who can who could risk a thousand bucks? Applies to everybody in here, right? Everybody in here, this would apply to. And you could do more, but I'm just saying you got to get you got to get the small account working before you do with your big account, right? So you use two units. All right, I determine my entry. I determine my entry looking at the software and looking at the price of the underlying stock. My target one and target two are predetermined. I go for a dollar on target one and two dollars on target two. My risk is set by a percentage. A five dollar option, my stop is three forty. So if I lose on two options, it's just it's just take worst case here. If I lose on two options, I buy the stock at five, the stock option at five, and I get stopped out at three forty. How much total money have I lost? What's the total amount of money I've lost? Three hundred and twenty bucks, right, Bill? Three hundred and twenty bucks. Now, if I sell one unit at a dollar profit and one unit at two dollars, what is my total profit if the trade's good? Three hundred dollars. Right? Now, the key is your accuracy. How do you get better than flipping a coin? You have the right tools is one way. You understand the code is another. And you watch me do this trade live until you get the mechanics of it down. On this one, my strategy would be a buy a put. I would have got my target. You bought two options at five. You had a thousand totally exposed. You'd make three hundred dollars. Everybody see how you get the thirty percent return on your thousand dollars you put up? Everybody see that? Now, accuracy. This is approximate accuracy on this trade. I will tell you that the people I've taught have come in a lot higher than this. And I think the reason is when I started the strategy, I had to play with the stops a lot to get it fixed. 
but uh, the accuracy has been a lot better the last few trades. Okay. That's what it looks like. Over 10 trades, if you lose twice and you're at 80% accuracy, you're going to generate 1800 bucks versus the 2000 you got in your account. Right? So if you did 12 trades a month at 80% accuracy, you would generate $1,800. And that would translate into about $22,000 a year based on two contracts. But it would do a lot more for you than that. What it would do for you is build confidence in a plan. You'll see it work. You'll be part of a community doing this trade, and you will feel uh, and have a desire to, to learn more, okay? That's the way it works. Another way to look at it, about a 22 to 1. Now, that's a plan, folks. This is the kind of plan you need. So, a recap of it. You understand the code. That's the monthly versus the weekly current price. You pick your horses. You got five horses. You go to the compass. You look at the setup. In the first 10 minutes of the opening, you make your pick. You follow the plan and let the horses run. Then your biggest decision is to decide where you want to go play golf or go to the beach. This is a great trade to learn. You all want to see what a successful trader looks like? <laughs> that was our first class. We got... Bill, Bill Sample stood up. He got so excited. Okay. Uh, Carol, I, what I do is I, I, I go on and preset orders in the cell. And I did it from a, from a, uh, a standpoint that I wanted to give a foundation and get into it. Because I've been doing this for 30-something years. And I know I've attended webinars. And I just want you to be thinking about one thing when you leave today is how you can learn the strategy. And thank you, Roger. Thank you for being open-minded and giving me a chance. OK, how can you get started with us? All right, we're going to do something next week that we've never done before. And I was convinced to do this by some very smart people. They've been to the class. These are people who've been around the industry. And they say, they say everybody needs to learn this trade. So I'm going to give everybody a chance to see me do it, OK? And so what we're going to do is do something. We're going to have a five-day challenge. I'm going to kick off Sunday night, tomorrow night, on September 29th, tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. I'm going to kick off the plan, because I lay out my plan for the whole week. I already told you what I thought about Monday, right? The general general consensus, my consensus coming into Monday. So I laid that out for everybody way before it happened. And that's Sunday night. Um, so at Sunday night at 8, 8.45, we're going to kick it off. Then Monday through Friday from 8 to 10 o'clock, we're going to do some trading. And we're going to do it for five days. Now we're going to record the event, OK? We're going to record the event, so you need to sign up to get the recordings. But we're going to do this five days, and we're going to and we're going to be together as we do this. And it's going to start out every day. We're going to do the prep in the first 30 minutes, the setup from 8:30 to 9, and then we're going to review. And I'm going to look at some other markets, and then we're going to get to meet Jeff Smith and Chuck Crow, part of my team, as we finish up. We're going to interview every day at 10 o'clock, somebody that's part of the DTI program, and where you can see how we've changed what they do. So this is our plan for next week. And we will tape it and record it for you. My goal today was place a value on knowledge. I think I've done that. I showed you the power of a plan that's working very well for all our students. And I said I wanted to get you motivated to achieve it. So here's the idea. If you send an email to me at t.busby99 at gmail.com, we will give you a password 
for this. Adam, what else am I leaving? Did you leave out a slide here? Did you want them to sign up? Or what did you do? They just, they're going to flood my in basket? Okay, there it is. Thanks, Morgan. I went past the sign up slide. All right. Anybody got any questions for me? I covered things. Uh, I covered, you know, the starting time for Sunday night. We do that every Sunday night. We'll lay out the week. And then, of course, we're going to do this from 8 to 10, Monday through Friday. Anybody got any questions? Uh, Mike, you only hold it for that day. Doreen, uh, talk to Adam. Will you talk to Adam on the phone? Okay, Roger. You need to know the monthly open. Our software gives it to you automatically, but you'll have to research it. The monthly open of a stock, okay? Oh, this is free, JP. We're not putting a price on this trial. All you have to do is show up. Your time. Yes, I will be doing futures trading also, Carol. I'll be showing you a NASDAQ trade I do every day. The five-day challenge is for those people Yes, there will be a recording each day. Now, what I will do, I'll, I don't know what day this is, but I will do, for those people that only get the tapes, uh, I will do a special frequently asked question period sometime next week. I'll get Morgan to schedule that, and we'll let you know, either via email or whatever. But I will do that for people that can't be there. Thank you for letting me be on here today. I hope I didn't disappoint you. I hope that you get motivated to achieve your goals. Get motivated. Take action. All this is requires is your time. Show up. Everybody have a good day. Dan, I love that Nadex in the morning. It's a great one. Thanks, Jay Spencer. That's where I'm headed to, isn't it? Thanks, Steve. And I appreciate those that gave me patience. I had to cover a lot of material in the beginning before I get into the meat. Remember the trade matrix. Remember the trade matrix. We'll be releasing 2014 software uh, next week that does it automatically for you. It's going to be a real game buster. And get the app loaded. Get that app. There'll be some trades there. Yes, I do trade live, Rick. Everybody have a good All right, great. Thank you, Tom. We appreciate you uh, being here today. And again, excellent job. And here's the um, link. I'll post it. I think Adam had typed it in there. Um, I'll post it for you guys one more time. Right here for the five days. If you want to watch Tom trade, they're doing a kickoff on Sunday evening. So. You can uh, check that out and uh, do that. So at this time, we're going to turn things over to our next speaker. Uh, we've got uh, Paul Lange of pristine.com. We appreciate Paul being here today. Uh, Paul, if you want to go ahead and load your slides, you can do that and kind of take 